Hey guys, welcome to another Unity tutorial. Um, sorry for not uploading recently, I just haven't really been feeling well, um, but I feel a bit better now, so I'm quite keen to continue. Uh, so we're going to continue with episode 2. Last episode we added some gravity. Uh, this episode we're actually going to make uh, jump, use our jumping animations. Uh, so if you look inside our animations for live added jumping, there will be a link in the description. Uh, to download the same animations if you want to follow along. Uh, they're just from Mixamo, um, so they're pretty simple. They've just got a falling idle, falling to land, a uh, hard landing, which we'll use in the next tutorial, and a jumping up. Okay, so firstly what I want to do is add these to our controller. Uh, so I'm going to create a brand new layer, and I'm going to call this jumping layer. And I have got caps lock on. <laughs> jumping layer. Okay, and what firstly what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna create an empty state. I'm just gonna call this empty. This is when we don't want the layer to be uh, affecting our base. Um, and then what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna add our jumping up animation in. Um, and I'm also going to add our falling to land and our falling idle. Okay, so for the jump, it's gonna be a little bit different. Um, I go to jumping up. So you see, we don't want to apply the fall straight away, otherwise we'll be in the air by the time the player actually leaves the ground, which isn't what we want. So what you can do is you can add an event to an animation to basically fire a function at a certain frame. Um, but if I open the window and I go to animation and animation. Um, so if I click on Jack and have a look at the jumping we just added, you can see it's read only, so I'm, I can't really add any events to it. Uh, so the workaround I have is if I just remove that jump animation, I go into our jumping up object here in the project, click on our animation, um, just hit Control D. So what it does is it duplicates the animation out and it actually creates it as its own separate file, which now gives us frighting access. So I'm going to click and drag that one into the animator instead. And if I now go to, uh, if I click on Jack, go to Window, Animation, uh, we can see if I now go to jump, it's not read only, and you see I can edit the keyframes and I can actually add some events. Okay, so let's uh, go into our C Sharp project. It's going to minimize all these. So what we firstly need to do is get our uh, velocity of the player relative to his rotation. Um, and why I say that is inside awake, you can see we can set the gravity direction. So if I all of a sudden change that to left, um, our fall, if we don't get the falling um, speed relative to the player's rotation um, then um, it's not really going to work as soon as we start moving the gravity direction. So the way I'm going to do it now is as long as we rotate the character towards the gravity direction. Uh, so if I all of a sudden change this to left, our player will rotate and it's, uh, it'll basically be falling down um, constantly with the gravity. Okay, so Ooh, okay, so moving on to, we'll go inside gravity and we're just going to create a function inside here and we're going to call this um, private void calculate falling. Okay, we're just going to duplicate this is grounded and we're just going to call it is falling. And then we're going to create a new header at the top. And we'll put all of our falling variables under here. So we'll call it jumping slash falling. And we'll start off with the public float of falling speed. And also have a public float of falling threshold. So we don't want to play the falling animation as soon as the player leaves um, the ground, mainly because if he leaves the ground for like 0.1 second, we don't want it to have to <laughs> uh, try play the animation. So we're going to make it after we hit a certain speed, we start playing the animation. Okay, so we've got falling threshold that will determine that speed. We're also going to create a public bool for um, jumping triggered. That's nice about triggered.
Okay. So let's go over to our jumping function here. And instead of logging I'm jumping, we're going to change this. So what we'll do is inside our animator, we'll just set up our triggers that we're going to be using. So to call each of these animations, uh, we want to fire a trigger to the animator and then it'll basically move from any state to our desired animation. So let's create these triggers. So we're going to have one for falling. We'll have one for jump. We'll also have one for land. Cool. So from any state, I'm going to make a transition over to jump. Uh, just make sure you're on the right layer, on the jumping layer. And make a transition from any state to jump, any state to falling, and any state to falling idle. Okay, so what we're going to do now is click on the transition. If you scroll to the bottom of it, you see we can add some conditions. This is where we'll be adding our trigger. So from any state to jump, we basically want the jump trigger. From any state to land, we want the land trigger. And for falling, we want the falling trigger. What we're also going to do is make a transition from jump to falling. Idle. Let me just move this one up here. Put that one down here. Okay, yeah, so we'll make a transition from jump to falling idle because the end of the jumping animation basically ties into falling idle. Okay, and then from falling land, we'll make a transition back to empty. That basically be, we're finished, we're done. Done with the state. Okay, so now those are set up, we need to work out when we're going to uh, call these triggers. So inside the jump function, what we'll do is we'll call our character animator.setTrigger. So it's basically uh, trigger our trigger. <laughs> and uh, what we want to do is trigger our jump. So now when we hit space, it'll trigger our jump. Uh, from my memory, if I go into input, player input actions, I think our jump was set to press and release. Make sure that's now set to press only. Cool. And make sure you uh, click save asset. Let that save. Cool, we'll come in. All right, I'm going to click on Jack so that I can see his animator update in real time, and I'm just going to hit play. Okay, so you see it'll just run through our empty state until one of our triggers are called. So I'm going to hit space now. See how jumping is called, and then it goes to our falling idle, which is exactly what we want. So under layers now, let's put this layer into effect. I'm just going to hit the little cog, change the weight all the way to one, make sure blending is set to override. Um, we're not going to apply a mask or anything, we'll just leave everything else as default. So now if I hit play, and now I hit space. See, he plays the jump and then does his falling idle. Cool, which is exactly what we want. Now let's add some force to the player, so <laughs> he actually jumps. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to add, so we got our jumping triggered. So let's firstly set that to true once we hit jump. Equals true. We're going to create a new pro, uh, public void um, jump force. Okay, well actually let's call that apply jump force. So this is the function we're going to be calling from the frame in the animation. And we will apply our jump force. So jump is triggered. Uh, just waiting for our uh, jump force to be applied. Um, what I'm going to do actually, I'm going to do jump triggered to here instead. Uh, actually, no, let's leave it here. And then inside jump, what I'm also going to do is right at the beginning, I'm going to say if jump triggered just for a turn. So we can't spam space. Okay, so apply jump force. Let's just quickly create a... I'm going to have a look at my models class quick. Under player. Player settings. So under, under movement speeds. Let's create a header. We'll call this jumping. 
we'll create a public float and jumping height. Well, let's call it jumping force. There we go. Okay, let's go back to our player controller. What we're gonna do is we'll grab this jumping triggered. We'll copy that. And under gravity, where we say if we're grounded, um, we set our current gravity to constant gravity. Well, we don't want to do that anymore. So we'll just add um, an and uh, not jumping triggered. So basically if jumping's triggered, we'll stop setting the constant gravity. Um, because what we're going to do is we're going to set gravity to our settings. Did we call it settings? Yes. Settings dot jumping force. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to apply this straight after jumping triggered just to make sure it's working. So we'll come back and change it to um, call it in our animation instead. So what I'm going to do is go to settings. I'm just going to change jumping force to 10 just to make sure it's working. I'm going to hit play. Make sure. Yep, there we go. But you, you, you can see what I mean though. Um, <clears throat> how it looks a bit weird when we add the force before the animation has actually left the ground. <laughs> uh, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to click on Jack. Go to window, uh, animation, animation. Let's go to our jump animation and we're just going to uh, click on our scene. We'll work out when the player actually leaves the ground, when we want to add the force. Now I'd say it's around about here. So I'm just going to click to add an event. And then inside the animation event, I'm going to apply jump force. We'll just make sure that's saved. I'll close this. Uh, let's just remove it from our jump function now. Okay, and I'll hit play and we'll see how this looks now. I hit space. There we go. Nice big jump. All right, so uh, that'll be it for this tutorial. Next tutorial, we'll look at landing. Um, and actually reset in the jump so you can actually jump again. <laughs> so thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.